Kia ora and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. My name is Damon and here we talk about Necromunda and some people really enjoy it. Um, so in this episode I'm going to um, be talking about brutes actually and giving you a guide to all of the brutes in the game. Now brutes are um, sort of special, special giant pets that you get for each gang in the game. Some of the gangs have house specific uh, brutes and some of them are sort of more generic and available to other um, gangs outside of um, being exclusive and you also have outlaw brutes here as well um, so we're going to go through every single one of them and just talk through how good they are really um, uh, or how bad they are actually in, in some cases too um, what kind of weapons they've got whether they're actually worth taking or not um, a quick overview on brutes I would say that all of the brutes are an expensive luxury they're certainly not something that you can start with um, you can't anyway because they are sort of dependent on rep as well. You do have to have a certain amount of rep to actually be able to have them. Uh, brutes are unnecessary parts of the game, but can add an extra um, massive amount of firepower or punch to your gang. Um, if you are um, somewhat of an underdog, I think they're actually viable and, and worth taking. Um, but generally speaking, we don't see a huge amount of use for these in our campaigns here at Wellywood. Um, we, we, we do see them occasionally. I've actually got one in my current campaign gang. Um, but yeah, these are more of a late campaign thing generally. Um, and I think, yeah, when, when there's too much money, when you've got too much money, you tend to buy brutes. But, um, before that you tend to be spending all that, um, all those hard earned creds on actually, um, buying equipment for your gang instead of spending two, two to 300 on a brute. Anyway, but moving on, um, if you're not familiar with Brutes, we're just going to get straight into it. And I'm going to start with the obvious elephant in the room here, and this is the Ambot. So um, Ambots are um, very, 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 very good. Um, now Ambots are giant, um, giant sort of digging robots, basically. They are excavation automata, um, so to speak. Now these guys... Um, they're 215 credits for all gangs, except for Cordor and Orlok, who get them slightly cheaper at 185 credits. Um, and to be honest, I think they're far too cheap at 215, let alone 185. These guys are common. They're available to every single gang. Um, and the, here are the stats, basically. So they're actual uh, stats in game. They have a quite a low movement of four, which is okay. Um, it's quite, it's quite good that they've got a slightly lower movement, I, I think, otherwise they would be, um, even more terrifying. They have a weapon skill of a three plus, which is very good. A ballistic skill of a five plus, which is not so good. A strength and toughness of five, three wounds, an initiative of a five plus, two attacks, and the mental stats are as follows. We've got an eight plus for leadership, six plus for cool, an eight plus for will, and a nine plus for intelligence. Now the important thing here is they come with a starting skill and that starting skill is infiltrate. So these guys can just appear anywhere on the board pretty much provided they're out of line of sight and whatever six inches or whatever it is, um, the infiltrate rule there. Uh, and they come equipped with light carapace armor and two tunneling claws. Um, so they come with infiltrate. They've got a, a special rule called cranial governors. So you can... Um, turn this off they start in safe mode and you can turn this off um, so that safe mode is is off and that will give them the berserker skill um, it will also give you d3 plus one attacks uh, which is which is kind of cool um, and all close combat attacks uh, must be divided amongst all models so they basically get reckless as a result of turning off the governors however anything they get in combat with they're just going to destroy anyway pretty much so i can't imagine you're going to really need to help them out in close combat so i wouldn't worry about that too much um and it can't be turned back on again this safe mode by the way um they can also be put to work if you have a mine workings uh in your territories uh, allocation and they can be put to work in the mine workings to gain you an extra d6 times 10 credits um they also have something called valuable, so if they are captured and not rescued, they can be sold as normal and added to the gang for free, um, or added to the gang for free, so you can actually just steal one off someone, which is kind of cool, if you have the uh, right amount of reputation to take that hanger on. Um, and you can also upgrade them like you can with most of the brutes. You can upgrade one of their fists to be a grav fist, which is plus 90 credits to do so, which gives you pretty much a grav pistol. Um, and a mono hook basically um, but to be honest the tunneling claws the tunneling claws are really good um, 
and their um, you know their ballistic skill is not great for using um, the grav pistol part anyway despite being a um, being a blast template anyway an overview of the Ambot there. Um, it's very, very powerful, partly because it has infiltrate. Now, of course, you can just pin these guys, but they're very, very hard to wound. They've got toughness five and three wounds, plus like carapace armor, which makes it very, very hard to, to hurt them. Okay, you can get lucky. I had a, um, a, a an, an Ambot in his first game against um, a friend of mine, and he shot me with a single bolt gun, three shots, all of them wound, and that's six damage, took out the Ambot in the first turn. Um, so it does happen. However, they are generally quite hard to kill. Um, and yeah, once they're in your face, uh, it's a real problem. So um, very, very, very good. And infiltrate just makes them um, superb. Um, the actual uh, tunneling claws themselves do have the melter trait. So um, very dangerous at short range, obviously taking you out of action. And they've got high damage output as well with those melter fists, um, which is what they are basically. So that's the Ambot. Um, and if I have to give them a sort of grade, I would say the Ambot is a, is a definite A. Um, it's right up there, being um, one of the best brutes in the game, if not the best. Um, but moving on now to the other sort of generic um, brute here, which is available to nearly all houses, and that, of course, is the Servitor Ogryn. Now, this is slightly different to the Ogryn that you get in an Ogryn gang. Um, he's certainly not a Lobo slave or anything. It's slightly different uh, in terms of the stats uh, and the loadout. Um, this guy is available for 210 credits, um, and um, 210 credits to, to, your, to your average gang, but to Goliath, these guys are slightly cheaper. They're 180 credits. So in terms of the actual stat lines here for the Ogryn, we've got a movement of 5, so slightly faster than the Ambot. Weapon skill 4, so not quite as good as the Ambot. Ballistic skill 5, same. Strength and toughness 5. Wounds 3. Initiative 4. Attacks 2. And the mental stats are as follows. We've got a leadership of 7, a call of 6, a willpower of 8, and an intelligence of 9. And these guys come with two augmetic fists. Now it's worth noting here, uh, these are not paired augmetic fists. These are just two separate augmetic fists. So you don't get that paired trait for the um, double your attacks characteristics. Um, they do have a bunch of special rules, of course. They've got one called Loyal, which um, adds two when assisting instead of one, um, which again is not that great. It's quite situational. It's not many times it's actually going to come up, but it's quite useful to have. They've also got something called Slow Witted, so they can't actually be part of group activations, which is a bit of a nerf there. Uh, and they've got Headbutt as well, um, which is kind of a fun skill, um, but it quite often hurts you um, just as much as it does them. In terms of the upgrade options on this, you can give them an arc welder to replace one of the augmetic fists with, and that's plus 70. Arc welders are very expensive, uh, sorry, very powerful, um, and 70 credits is quite a lot to add on to um, 210 credit Ogryn anyway, to be honest, though. Um, so I'd usually just stick with the two augmetic fists, I reckon. However, you can give them a spud jacker, and that actually knocks 20 credits off the cost. So that's not even that bad. Um, a spud jacker and an augmetic fist could be quite, quite doable. They can have a Storm Welder for plus 75 credits. Um, Storm Welders are crazy. They're just really, really fun, but really crazy and often kill your own guys and yourself if they blow up. You also got Furnace Plates for 15 credits there as well. I'd definitely recommend getting the Furnace Plates, to be honest, if you've only got 15, it's only 15 credits, you know, just to give them an actual saving throw. But as you can see, if you compare that side to side with the Ambot, uh, the Ogryn just fails in nearly every compartment. Um, it's just nowhere near as good as the Ambot. The skill, starting skill that it gets is not as good. Its stats aren't really as good. Um, it's just not as effective as a Brute. Um, and as a result, I'm going to give the Ogryn like a, I don't know, like a D, I reckon. Um, it's not. It's certainly not good. It's not terrible, but it's certainly not good. Um, and those are the two, the Ambot and the Ogryn, this, uh, are your two sort of basic, most basic Brutes in the game. Moving on now. Uh, the next one that we've got here is the Iron Automata. Now this one's quite interesting, it's actually illegal, so this is something you have to get from the black market trading post. It's 220 credits to do so, so definitely slightly more expensive on the credit front. And this guy is just a giant killer robot, so kind of like your Ambot, but not um, a uh, tunneling bot. This guy is more of a sort of... Um, ex-imperial um, robot so this guy is a little bit more built for warfare 
his stats are as follows. We have a movement five, weapon skill, ballistic skill of four. So quite a bit more average on those ones with a slightly higher ballistic skill than the other two. We've got a strength and toughness of five and wounds three. Same as the other brutes. Initiative five up, attacks two, and we've got a leadership of eight. A cool of four, which is great. A willpower of eight and an intelligence of eight there too. This guy comes with two skills out of the box, and they are both pretty good. The first one is fearsome, which means that you'd have to trigger a willpower check to charge him. Not that you're ever going to want to charge a um, giant killer robot generally. Uh, and he's also got the nerves of steel skill, which is one of the best skills in the game, especially when you combine it with a cool of four plus. So that does mean, if you're not familiar with the nerves of steel skill, it does mean that if he gets shot at, instead of being pinned, you choose to um, roll your roll a cool check, and if you pass, um, you, you remain standing. So very, very good with a four up on 2d6 there. Um, it's nearly always standing after that. Now the weapons that he comes with is an assault cannon, a power claw. Uh, and he also has um, a three up save as well, which is fantastic. So already you can see that this guy is pretty much just an absolute badass. Um, however, he has got some big, um, big rules here, which do make him slightly um, less reliable. The first one is that he's really glitchy. So each activation, um, if you, you need to roll a two plus or gain insanity. So that is a huge, huge, huge nerf because um, the insanity condition can be absolutely crippling. One in three chance of actually attacking your own guys when you've got um, a, a guy that's this scary with an assault cannon and a power claw, that's um, potentially very worrying. You also got a one in three chance of becoming broken and just running off as well. And a one in three chance of acting normally and trying to get out of it however his willpower is not very high um, so uh, yeah it's it's not easy to recover from being um, insane if he does go insane so that does make all of those stats suddenly go oh okay he's not really that reliable um, he's then got something called automated repairs which um, on a six plus in the recovery phase he can roll an extra injury dice when making recovery tests and pick the one that he wants um, so really, if he didn't have that really glitchy um, thing, he'd be by far the best brute in the game. However, um, the really gl glitchy does make him um, incredibly unreliable, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly unreliable. So definitely um, something that you're going to need to think about there. Um, just quickly, the assault cannon for the iron automata um, stats are as follows. We've got a short range of 12 and a long range of 24. So it's nothing. It's not like a heavy stubber, really. And we've got a um, plus one at short range as well. This is strength five, uh, minus one AP and damage one, and it's rapid fire two and scarce. So it's an interesting one. It's like a short range heavy stubber, but slightly more powerful. Actually, it's more like a heavy bolter with only damage one, I suppose. Um, but a really interesting one there. Um, and then he's got a, um, what's it called? A uh, power claw as well, which has... Um, Minus one AP, two damage, power, and pulverizing. So pretty, pretty, pretty nasty uh, if he behaves himself and doesn't go insane. So, um, but there you go. Um, quite a fun one, I think. Quite a nice one to use, but yeah, certainly um, very sketchy. <laughs> so there you go. Now, uh, the next one we're going to look at here is the uh, Spectre. Now, this guy is, um, he, oh God. So this is the Delac brute here. Um, and he's called a, um, what's he called? Pi Piscean Spectre or something. Uh, this guy is uh, incredibly insane. It uh, has it is 205 credits to buy and it's just for Delac gangs only. Um, and the stats are as follows. It has a movement of five, a weapon skill of three, which is excellent. A ballistic skill of five, but that's okay because it doesn't shoot. A strength and toughness of four, so slightly lower than the other brutes so far, but the same wounds with three. An initiative of three up and four attacks, which is very high. Um, we've got a leadership of seven, a call of six, a willpower of six, and an intelligence of eight there too. Starting skills comes with fearsome, so again, willpower to charge it. Not that you're ever going to charge this guy because he's absolutely terrifying. Um, and his weapons, he has these psychomantic claws. Now, psychomantic claws are paired as well, so what the paired trait does is it doubles your base attacks characteristic. So when we're looking at attacks four, suddenly we're looking at attacks eight. Now, when we're charging, that goes to nine. Uh, and we've also got two of them, which means that we get 10 attacks on the charge. Yeah, so take that in for a second. We've got 10 attacks on the charge with the, um, with the Spectre here. Absolutely disgusting. And he's also got Carapace Armor as well, so he's got a four up save. He flies, so he ignores all terrain and can move freely between levels. 
Uh, and he's also got psychoteric mastery as well, which means that he's an uns unsanctioned psyker and gets to choose um, one of the um, darkness, delusion or madness, weird powers, basically. Um, and you can also buy him extra weird powers for uh, 30 credits too, which is quite frankly just insane. Not that you're really going to want to do that because this guy's an absolute close combat monster. Um, now his psychoteric uh, claw thingies are, uh, let's have a look at these ones. Uh, where are they? Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to find the psychoteric claw thingies. Uh, can't actually see them by the looks of it. But yeah, they're, I mean, 10 attacks with anything is absolutely disgusting. Um, <laughs> especially with, uh, you know, you've got a three up weapon skill there as well. Um, but yeah, just, I haven't actually got the stats in front of me for the weapon there. But they are, um, it, just the fact that you've got 10 attacks on its own is, is, is bad enough. I think that's the highest amount of base attacks that anything has in the entire game, actually. When you're charging, um, 10 attacks, it's more than any corpse grinder or anything. So, um, I mean, this one is, if you ask me, for 205 credits is extremely broken. The fact that you can then add um, weird powers to it as well is bonkers with a decent willpower of six up as well. So you can actually use them. Um, I mean, yeah, it's insane. The, uh, the Pisces Inspector is most certainly the most broken brute out of all of them so far, I think. And I'm going to give that one an A star. Absolutely. So it is better than the Ambot by quite a long um, way, if you ask me. Anyway, moving on from the broken, we've got the Goliath um, specific uh, brute here. And that's, of course, the Zerka. Now, this, I've said, is my least favorite model in the entire game, I think. Uh, it's just dreadful. Um, in my opinion anyway, it's 210 credits and it's just available to House Goliath gangs. Um, and the stats are as follows. It has a movement 4, a weapon skill of 3, ballistic skill 6, strength of 6, which is really nice and high, wounding most things on a 2. Toughness 5, wounds 3, initiative 5, attacks 3, which is nice and high again. They've got a leadership 7, call 6, willpower 8, and intelligence of 10, because it's not very smart at all. It comes with the impetuous skill, which gives you a four inch consolidation instead of two inch. And it's got two open fists as well. Now this guy has a special rule called combat chem stash. So you can roll a D6 when activating to modify the attack characteristic until the end of the round. So on a one, you get one. On a two, you get plus one attack. On a three to four, you get plus two attacks. On a five to six, you get plus three attacks. So you can get lots of attacks with this guy too, but not quite as many as the um, Pisces Inspector even then. In terms of upgrades, you get Mutated Fists and Bone Spurs, which are plus 70 credits, but very, very good because they're 2-inch versatile and, I believe, 2 uh, two damage and pulverize, something like that anyway. Furnace Plates for 10 credits and a Stim Slug Stash for 20 credits, which I think is more than worth it. Now, the thing that stands out for this guy is that I don't really think that he adds anything to Goliath at all, especially now that you've got Stimmers. I think your Stimmer is generally better than your Zerka and far cheaper. Uh, well, not cheaper, but with equipment and stuff, they're, they're probably about the same. Um, the fact that he's movement four um, is annoying. He, he Basically, it's kind of annoying that you've got a brute that doesn't really add anything different to the Goliath gang, in my opinion. So I'd just give it a hard miss, to be honest. So I'm not going to say it's terrible because it's not. Um, it's definitely better than the Ogryn, I would say, but only marginally. So we'll give this guy a... A, B, C, D. We'll give him a D, I think. Um, a, gr a D grade for the Zerka. I just don't think he's that great. He's definitely better with the Mutated Fists and Bone Spurs because that um, versatile range does give you a bit of extra stuff. But, I mean, he's just so easy to pin. He's coming at you. You just pin him with las guns and uh, hope for the best. Um, should he get in combat with you, though, he's going to mince you up. Um, but he's not quite as scary as some of the other options, if you ask me. So there you go. Moving on to the house corridor um, specific brute here. We've got the Stig Shambler. Now this one's really cool. It's basically Master Blaster from Mad Max 3 Beyond Thunderdome. Uh, he's very expensive though. He's 280 credits this guy and he's only for house corridor. Here are the stats. We've got movement 4. So pretty slow. We've got weapon skill and ballistic skill 4. Strength 5. Toughness 4. Wounds 4, which is higher than any of the other brutes so far. An initiative of 4+, plus, attacks of 2, leadership 9, cool 8, willpower 9, intelligence 8. So those mental stats aren't very high, but there is something that does give you um, a little bit of a bonus with those mental stats in a second as well. Now this comes equipped with a twin-linked heavy stubber, which is excellent, and a heavy club, which um, are also pretty good. We've also got flak armor too. 
And this is actually two guys. Uh, it's a little guy riding on a big guy. Um, it's quite a cool model. Uh, so uh, yeah, you can see in the picture here, it's a pretty cool model. Um, it's got a bunch of stat, uh, extra rules here. We've got intelligent control. So this kind of negates the fact that it's got low mental stats in that you can re-roll any failed leadership, cool willpower or intelligence tests. However, bear in mind that your willpower, leadership, intelligence and cool are pretty low. Um, aren't, aren't very good, should I say. Um, but it is nice that you get to re-roll them. Uh, you can also move and shoot with this guy. So he can, he pretty much counts as he's got a suspenser. So you can move and shoot with that twin linked heavy stubber. Um, but in terms of options, we've got a heavy flamer now. So heavy flamers are generally pretty gash, but they're actually quite good on this guy because we've got the inbuilt suspenser. So for 70 credits extra, you can take the heavy flamer. I'd still think that the heavy stubber is probably the better option, but the heavy flamer is definitely viable on this guy. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, heavy flamers are pretty cool. They're strength five and minus one AP. Um, but they're just not amazing, really. Um, looking at the twin linked heavy stubber, um, it's pretty powerful. It's 20 and 40 inch short and long range, so the same as a normal heavy stubber, and it's minus one at long range. Strength four, minus one AP, and two damage. Uh, we've got four plus uh, ammo there, and rapid fire three um, with the twin linked trait there as well, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, lots and lots of damage output if you hit with that thing. However, a long range at minus one means you're hitting on fives. If there's any cover involved, then you're hitting on sixes. So yeah, there you go. It's an interesting one. I quite like it. I think it's way too expensive for what it does though. So that does bump it down a little bit. We're gonna give that one a, a C, I reckon, in terms of the overall brutes, we'll give it a C. Um, I think it is better than the, uh, the Ogryn and the um, what was the other one I didn't give a, a good one to? The Zerka, perhaps. Um, but yeah, that's the Stig Shambler for House Cordor there. Now, the next one, moving on, we've got House Orlok's um, Servitor here. So this guy is, uh, well, this guy is a, a lugger. So he, he lugs around um, big crates and, and ammo and stuff and does general work for House Orlok. Um, this guy's 230 credits as well. Uh, he's just available to House Orlock. We've got a movement of four, weapon skill five, ballistic skill four, so not very good stats on those two. Strength and toughness five, wounds three, initiative five, attacks two, leadership seven, cool five, will nine, and intelligence eight. Now this guy comes equipped with a harpoon launcher, which is not the best heavy weapon, but it's not bad either. And an open fist, um, which is the same as your um, servitor combat weapon. Uh, and he's also got like carapace armor of four plus, which is quite nice to have. This guy is a weapons platform. So if you're firing an unwieldy ranged weapon, it becomes a basic action. So the same again, it means that you can move and shoot with this guy just as you can with your stick shambler. And he's also got something called ammo hoppers, which is really cool. He's got reroll any failed ammo test results of a one. So he's pretty much an ammo jack on his own. Um, that's exactly what the ammo jack hanger on does. Uh, if you want to go for options on this guy, though, we've, this is where it gets a bit more fun. We've got a heavy bolter in, in, uh, to replace the harpoon launcher for 50 credits. Definitely worth doing. Um, we've got a heavy flamer again, so but this is plus 85 credits, so all of a sudden this thing's very expensive. Or you can just do 20 credits for the heavy stubber, which I think is quite a good option. Uh, heavy carapace armor and a mono sight as well for um, 20 and 25, respectively. So... I mean, this guy seems a bit lacking in a lot of ways, to be honest. I think the Stig Shambler is better because it's got better special rules um, and four wounds instead of three. Uh, it hasn't got a good save, though, but they're quite similar, actually. The server, the Lugger and the Stig Shambler in a lot of ways. Uh, both of them can have, uh, you know, shooty, shooty, daka daka, but the twin link to so much better than the single... Um, the single heavy stub, but I, I think the heavy bolter is nice on this guy, but it does push him to 280 credits just for that. Um, so I'm going to give this guy a, a C as well, maybe a C minus um, for the Orlock Servitor. I don't think he's quite as good as the Stig Shambler, almost, but not 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 too good. However, the Stig Shambler is more expensive, so uh, let's just call it a C. We'll give them both a C. Neither of them are going to set the world on fire, basically. Um, however, the next one, and this is Van Sar's Brute, is, uh, is very, very good. So this is the Arachne Rig Servo Suit. This is basically a, a driven um, spider tank from, I wish it was a spider tank from Ghost in the Shell, but unfortunately the model that came out from Forge World uh, has made it something else entirely, and I just don't really like the aesthetics of it. Um, 
The stats for the servo suit though are movement five, weapon skill and ballistic skill four. Um, so pretty average there. We've got strength five and toughness four. So it's got a lower toughness than some of the other brutes. Wounds of three, initiative four up, attacks of four, which is very high. We've got a leadership five, cool of five, a willpower of eight and an intelligence of six. Now this one comes with fast shot, which is excellent. So fast shot means that you can, if you're stationary, you can shoot twice in the same turn. And it's also got twin linked heavy LAS carbines and four servo arms uh, with a light carapace armor there as well. It is immune to rad phage, which is a very situational. You're not really gonna get rad against you much playing Vansar. Um, and for options, you can give it a rad gun for plus 60 credits, a plasma gun for plus 60 credits, um, or heavy carapace armor instead of light carapace armor for 20 credits as well, which personally I don't think is worth it because it means you're, you're losing initiative and minus one to your charge there as well. Um, it, it's important to note that if you do have a rad gun or a plasma gun, it does replace one of the servo arms, so you do get minus one attack in close combat as a result for those 60 credits. Um, but it's pretty good. I'm just going to have a look at the twin linked, um, twin linked heavy LAS carbines here, which are very, very good. We've got a 15 inch short range, a 30 inch long range with plus one to hit at short range. Now these things are strength four, only one damage, but they're four plus ammo, plentiful and rapid fire three. So yeah, lots and lots and lots of strength four shots there there's no ap on them but i mean this thing's plentiful so it runs out of ammo then you can reload for free uh, at the cost of an action very very nice indeed um i would say the servo suit is right up there um, as one of the best brutes in the game i don't think it's quite as good as the uh the i don't know is it as good as the ambot i don't think it is because the ambot is so much cheaper so we're going to give this one like a Oh, an A minus or a B plus, somewhere around that mark, I think. It's very, very good though. Um, very, very good indeed. Um, and to be honest, I think out of the box at 240 credits, I don't think you really need to give it any extras. It's definitely pretty affordable, um, really. So very, very good that one, the Vansar one. As if Vansar needed any help as well. Anyway, um, Moving on now, we've got the Chimerix. Now this is the Escher specific house brute. This one is 220 credits and has um, the, uh, well, it, these, are, these are the stats. Here you go. So it's slightly faster with a movement of six. We've got weapon skill four plus, ballistic skill four plus, strength of four, so slightly lower, and a toughness of five. Wounds three, initiative three, uh, attacks three, leadership eight, call of seven, willpower seven, and intelligence of eight. And it's also got the crushing blow skill, which is quite good. Um, means just one of your attacks is just more potent than the rest. Now, this guy comes with a chemical cloud breath weapon and a mono hook, basically, which is sharp talons. Now, the sharp talons on this thing um, are pretty good, but you can upgrade them to make them even better. Um, now this guy has reg regeneration, which is excellent. So unless you're on fire, you can spend a simple action to regenerate and heal one wound on a four plus. Fantastic. Um, and crushing blow, of course, is um, gives you nominate one attack before rolling to hit to, to, to gain plus one strength and damage if hitting as well. So it's quite nice. Um, you can upgrade this to have a gaseous eruption um, to replace its breath weapon, plus 80 credits. Now this that just makes it gas instead of um, chemical. We've got razor sharp talons, which are damage three and pulverize or something crazy like that. Um, yeah, three damage, ouch. Uh, and you can give it flak armor as well, which is basically scaly hide. So um, you've got plus 10 credits for that one as well. Uh, looking at the, um, the, the breath for this weapon, we've got the chemical cloud breath, which is six to 12 inches, um, plus one to hit at short range, strength three, minus one AP, and damage one and blast three inches. So it's quite interesting. It's basically like a, a short range frag grenade um, with minus one AP, which is quite interesting. But if you upgrade to the gaseous eruption breath weapon, this is a template and it's the same as uh, your chem thrower. Um, so it's quite nice. Of course, important to note, you can't give a Chimerix a, um, Chimerix a uh, chem, uh, chem synth or anything to make that gas we weapon better. Um, but um, yeah, it's still pretty powerful. Um, it's still pretty powerful, even though it doesn't pin stuff. 
Um, so there you go, that's the Chimerix. I'd say the Chimerix is very, very good. Um, those, I mean, in close combat, it's pretty lethal with the crushing blow and the uh, the claws doing so much damage and stuff as well. So, and also having that ability to be able to regenerate is excellent as well. So we'll give this one a solid B. Um, it's not as good as, say, the Ambot and the Arachne rig, but it's certainly up there for me. Uh, and it's got higher movement as well, so it can get around a bit with movement six. Um, 220 credits, it's it's pretty good. It's valid, it's, it's decent. So those are all your sort of normal brutes. Now we're going to move into the outlaw brutes. Now these guys are, you know, only available to outlaws, and these came out and were published in a white dwarf uh, about a year ago. Maybe even more now. Time flies when you get as old as me. Uh, the first one, of course, uh, as if Ambots weren't good enough already, we have now have something called a Scrap Code Corrupted Ambot. Now, this Ambot is basically just a corrupted Ambot. So it has a, much, a few minor differences, but it's still very, very, very good. This guy has 220 credits, and it's only available to Outlaws. Um, the stats are as follows. It has a movement of 4, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 5, strength toughness 5, wounds 3, initiative 5, attacks 3, Leadership 8, Cool 6, Will 9, and Intelligence 10, so um, pretty much the same stats on that one as well. This guy also has two Tunneling Claws and Light Carapace Armor, so it has all the same stuff. Now you can um, upgrade it to have the Grav Pistol and the tun you know, the Grav Pistol instead, or the Grav uh, Fist 4 plus 90. You can also give it Heavy, heavy Carapace Armor for uh, 55 credits. But you've also got Armor Spikes, which are quite cool. Uh, the 15 credits then basically uh, give you an extra sort of attack uh, when you charge and stuff, I believe, something like that anyway. Um, actually, no, they inflict a strength one hit when becoming base to base with any other fighter and they apply before any attacks, so that's quite interesting. In terms of the skills though, instead of having infiltrate, instead of having infiltrate, this guy has berserker, which gives you plus one attack on the charge, and nerves of steel, which is even worse than uh, infiltrate because you can't really pin this guy. He's got a decent call as well with the call of six up, so most of the time he's gonna be standing. Um, but he also has something called Machine Madness here, and that means that all of his attacks have Reckless. Again, not really much of a problem. Um, but after a, after a target is seriously injured or taken out of action, roll a two plus or immediately gain insanity. So should he be taking people out, um, you need to not roll once, otherwise you gain insanity. Um, he's also got the valuable thing as well, so he, you can um, you can hijacking him and keeping him in, keep him in your gang if you um, if you hi if you um, capture him. So all in all, he's generally better than the normal Ambot. However, that machine madness does nerf him quite a bit, and um, I don't know. I think the normal Ambot is marginally better as a result of that. Um, so I would say this guy is a sort of A minus to a B just because of that um, that insanity risk there, um, because he's gonna take people out because he's an absolute force to be reckoned with. Um, it's just a question of when you roll that one and how impactful it's gonna be in the game. Some games he'll never roll a one and he'll be fantastic, but some games he'll just go insane very, very early and ruin your entire day. Um, so that's why I just can't give him, I can't give him as much credit as the normal Ambot there. Um, so moving on, we've got the Sump Beasts next. Now this one's really, really, really cool because you can model this any way you like. Um, and it's really customizable, so this would be great for an outcast leader or something. You can have a gang that worships this guy, um, a gang of scum that just worships a Sump Beast. I think that's quite a cool idea. Um, now this guy, you've got three profiles you can choose from, so it's very much the Venator of, of Brutes here. Um, the first profile is movement 3, weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4, strength 5, toughness 6, wounds 4, initiative 5 up, 2 attacks, and then 9, 4, 5, 9 for the mental stats there. So that's the slow one but very tough one with toughness 6 there. We've then got the middle of the road one which is movement 4, better weapon skill of 3, same ballistic skill, same um, strength, lower toughness, same wounds, higher initiative with four plus, same attacks with two, same mental stats there entirely. So that one is slightly faster, well, movement four is not fast, that's for sure, but slightly better in close combat with a weapon skill of three, uh, and also having much lower toughness there as well though, than the first one. Uh, and the third profile is slightly faster again, so we've got movement five this time, with a weapon skill of four, a ballistic skill of five, strength only four, so lower strength and a toughness of five. 
Um, the same amount of wounds with four, the same amount of attacks, the same initiative, and relatively similar um, mental stats here with a leadership of eight, call of five, willpower of six, and intelligence ten. So the mental stats are slightly lower on this one as well. And they come with ferocious jaws out of the box. Now, you can upgrade these with all sorts of different things, which is really cool. You can give them crushing claws for plus 70, which is the sort of pulverized nasty high damage claws. You can also give it a lashing tail, which is, um, I believe, gives you a versatile weapon for 50 credits. You've got multiple legs, which give you plus two movement and clamber. So if you give that to the high movement profile one, and you've got a movement seven that can just run up stuff, which is quite scary, and that's 20 credits to do so. Prehensile Tongue, which I believe is also a versatile weapon, uh, gives you that's 60 credits though. And we've got Venomous Poisonous Bite for 35, which is Toxin, uh, and Light Carapace Armor. So you can take Light Carapace Armor on there for 40 credits too. Um, so there you go. Um, some some really cool options on that one, uh, and you can you can have any any amount of those um, different uh, upgrades there. And he's two hundred credits at base, so it can get quite expensive if you're not careful. But I love the fact that you can customize these. Uh, in terms of the special rules, though, we've got under hive horror. So if you're activated within six inches of any seriously injured fighter, friend, or foe, pass an intelligence test or make a charge or coup de gras action against that fighter. And you must always make a coup de gras action if able to instead of consolidation. So they can finish off your own guy. So the best thing to do with the sump beast is just let them go off alone and just charge at your enemies pretty much. Um, but yeah, it's impossible to give this one a grade because they can be really good and they can be not so good depending on the different upgrades that you give them pretty much. So um, that's that. Uh, now moving on to the warp horror. Now this is what I'm actually using in my current campaign as a sort of demon host proxy. This guy's 210 credits. Uh, he's movement six, so he's nice and fast. He's weapon skill three, which is great in close combat. Ballistic skill six, so that doesn't matter. Strength six though, so very strong, um, wounding most things on twos. Toughness four, which is not not high. Uh, wounds 3, initiative 4, attacks 3. We've got a leadership call, willpower and intelligence of 9, 6, 7, 9. With two horrific appendages, which are off the top of my head when I use them. They are um, dam damage 2, I believe, and minus 1 AP. Uh, and you can you can give them massive tentacles, uh, plus 50 credits. Warp fire breath, which is, uh, you know, a blazing uh, fire attack from the mouth. For 90 credits and you've got undulating skin here which is plus 40 credits and i took undulating skin on mine uh, which means that you reduce all damage suffered by one which is really really cool for keeping them alive now these guys have terrifying so this is excellent now terrifying is way better than fearsome because it means that any shoot or fight or charge action pretty much they have the opponent has to take a willpower check to target them um, or they lose their activation pretty much. So it's very, very good, very similar to a corpse grinder um, butcher mask. Um, and they've also got a really cool special room rule, which I really, really like. It's just super fluffy and it's a really cool mechanic and it's called Warp Denizen. So in each end phase, you roll a 2d6. Uh, if the result is equal to or lower than the current game round, you suffer a flesh wound, um, but you get to ignore all lasting injuries except memorable deaths. So you basically fade throughout the game and get, you know, get worse as the game goes on. So you're much more impactful in the first part of the game. But if, the, if it's a long drawn out game, then you're likely not to be around by the end of it. Um, so really, really cool. I love the warp horror. I'm really enjoying using it at the moment. Um, moving on to the last one in the bunch, and that is your muta mutated Ogryn. Now, not to be confused with your servitor Ogryn, this guy's 210 credits, um, and his stats are as followed. Uh, movement 5, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 5, um, strength and toughness 5, wounds 3, initiative 4, attacks 3, leadership 7, call 6, willpower 8, and an intelligence of 9 with two open fists. So instead of having the... Um, the uh, Augmetic Fist, we've just got two open fists here, which is not as powerful. However, you can give him plus 30, uh, plus 30 credits and you can give them a Power Maul to replace one of those open fists. Or you can go with a Horrific Appendage to replace uh, an open fist as well for plus 20 credits. And you can also give them Furnace Blades for 15 credits too. Now, what makes this guy so much better than the normal Ogryn uh, is that he comes with True Grit, which is a great skill. Um, means that you uh, you know reduce damage when you when you get to 
taking injury dice, which is quite cool. Um, and you also get one random ferocity or savagery skill. Now, if you get lucky and get nerves of steel or some of the savagery skills, which are available for um, corpse grinders, that's amazing. So coming with true grit and a random ferocity or savagery skill is excellent, particularly if you get lucky and roll a good one. Uh, and you're slow witted as well, so you can't be part of a group activation. But the mutated Ogryn for me is far better than the normal Ogryn. Um, and yeah, just just much, much nicer. So a solid sort of C, C for that one. And he's, he's fairly cheap too. Um, and you don't really need to give him the upgrades necessarily to make him pretty worthwhile. Um, so yeah, he's pretty solid. I would say he's he's decent, um, and that that there is all the brutes up to date. I'm not going to talk about the um, squat brute and the um, the brutes from the Ash Wastes book just yet because they are kind of new to me and I haven't actually been able to give them any thought and have a proper look at them. Um, but those are all the brutes available in the game so far. Uh, let me know what you think. Um, I, I, let me know if you've used these guys as well. Um, you know, particularly the Iron Automata and um, some of the slightly more sketchy ones that are just a bit a bit scary for me to use. Um, I've used some of them, um, and I like most of them, but I just think the Brutes kind of are a little bit too powerful for the game for the price that they they cost. Quite a lot, quite often they're not that expensive, particularly the Ambot, which is too cheap for what it does. Really, it's just very, very, very good. Um, and some I've seen some people with multiple ambots as well. You can have two of them in a gang, um, but don't do that. Um, just don't do it. You're just not a nice person if you have two ambots in your gang, really. Um, and there you go. That's me uh, over and out. Um, again, please like, share, subscribe, um, and um, again, thank you very much to my patreons. Uh, uh, really appreciate you. Uh, the next video I do will probably be on pets actually, and just going through all the pets in the game. I think at some point. Um, but that's it for now. Uh, peace out.